Good morning. I want to talk a little bit about crystal batteries today. About five years ago, I had the opportunity to do some research on crystal batteries. And at that time, what I was seeing was uh, everybody was mixing magnesium sulfate, potassium chloride, and alum and borax all together and then throwing it in between two electrodes and it, and it produces electricity for an extremely long period of time. So I, th I thought that was very interesting, but I wanted to, but nobody, there was no definite uh, proportions or anything about this, so I, it needed some research. And so I started uh, researching the, the uh, ingredients in there, and borax is, was the most interesting of all of those. And, and that's because it's a linking agent. And in chemistry, it's commonly used to link unreactive species together so that they become reactive. And so I think that this is really the, the key to what makes the crystal battery work. So what I did in my research was I took pieces of paper and I made a, a solution out of each one of those and I soaked each one of these pieces of paper in, uh, in the different uh, ingredients and then I tried various combinations of those pieces of paper in between electrodes and to make batteries and then uh, I would test each one of those combinations and, and to find out which ones perform the best and what I came up with was that magnesium sulfate works, worked best on, best on the cathode and potassium chloride worked best on the anode but they could be reversed and it still worked uh, but the, the common thing that I found uh, amongst all the batteries was that the borax worked best on the separator paper and that's logical because it's a linking agent so it's linking the chemistry of the anode with the chemistry of the cathode and so <clears throat> that's why I believe that borax is, is probably a, a very necessary uh, ingredient in a lot of batteries. So I've decided to uh, try a little bor borax on the separator paper and the biocell to see what the results were. And I will do that uh, ex experiment for you here shortly. I'll be back. Okay, here we go. I'm going to just build this battery and uh, see how it does. Now I have not done this experiment beforehand, so I don't know how it's going to work any better than you do. This is live on the air. So here's my water-based alkaline titanium dioxide hydrophilic mixture. And I'm going to put it on the... It's got a little bit of graphite in it because titanium needs to be in contact with graphite to work. And... I'm going to put, this is my oil-based hydrophobic uh, microspheres I made in an ultrasound machine. I'm going to spread a drop of that on the positive electrode. Okay. And then take this piece of paper. This is a solution of borax and distilled water and as you can see there's some of the borax precipitated out it got down to 18 degrees here last night and inside right now it's 58 degrees and all of that borax was in solution when it was warmer so the borax isn't very soluble in water and the temperature makes a huge difference so Anyway, here goes the separator paper now on the top of that and the positive electrode on that. Now, let's test our voltage and amps and see what we got, if anything. All right, there we go, look at there. 1.14 uh, 3 volts 1.14 2 3 4 so it's a little over 1.14 volts there's 1.15 6 it's climbing a little bit still so the chemistry is equalizing in there 
uh, we're at 1.15 volts and still climbing slowly. Let's give it just a, a minute to do its equalization in there and then we'll test it some more. Usually it doesn't take very long for it to, things to equalize out. Alright, so we're at 115.56. That's close enough. Alright, switch over to milliamps volting and voltage. Voltage. Milliamp setting. Alright, I'm just going to hold this down quick so we can just get a maximum volts on, or amps on this. Now watch the meter. I got 6.3. Now let's short it out for a little bit longer. Drop down to about two and it's holding. Looks like it's holding around two milliamps. Now let's check and see if it's damaged our self-charging ability or not. Nope. Climbing up fast. 98, 99, 1 volt, 1.01. Let's see if it gets all the way back up. It's climbing really fast, though. That's nice. 104. 05. 06. It doesn't look like it's hurt the recharging ability of it at all. It's going to go all the way back up, no doubt. Let's uh, discharge it again. Test it again. Alright. Ooh. 15 milliamp. Or no, I'm on a 20 milliamp uh, setting now. holding right there. Mm -hmm. 83, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 90. Mm -hmm. it's, it's got a nice self-charge on it. It hasn't hurt that a bit. So, it doesn't look like it's hurt anything. Matter of fact, it may have sped up the self-charge a little bit, because it's definitely charging up really fast. Look at that. Alright. I think I'll keep the borax in the thing and run some more different experiments to see if it, uh, if it interferes with anything. We'll take it back out. But it looks like that uh, that might be a good addition. Thank you for watching.